But there's so much graffiti art in Toronto and everywhere in the world, and a lot of it is actually quite good. It has gained a different recognition now. I mean, there are, there are galleries who show graffiti artists. Some of it just tag and destroy, and others that in on sites and, and create actually beautiful, interesting, dynamic images. You know, I was a fan of his work for a number of years before he came to Toronto. I went, as soon as I heard about it, I went down right away. Banksy is a unidentified graffiti artist. We believe that he's created seven pieces in Toronto. Um, some were painted over right away, some, you know, disappeared. Um, but we really wanted to preserve this, one, because we liked it, and two, we thought it was a special piece for Toronto. It, it definitely was an agonizing year, driving by, walking by the site, and just watching all the other pieces in Toronto be tagged over, painted over, destroyed, or go missing. I think at the time when we took down the building, we knew we were going to preserve it, but we didn't know exactly what we were going to do. We were still in the design stages of the project. Uh, we weren't sure exactly when the project was going to start construction, and we hadn't found a place for it yet. But we knew we were going to keep it, and it was going to be part of the project. With Fella's help, we went out to a few different artists um, that do artwork, architectural work, um, to come up with plans based on you know, the development and what they, what their vision is for the art and told them that we also wanted to include the Banksy in the piece. I was brought in uh, just uh, after the previous building that existed on that site was demolished and the Banksy was saved. And that's when they brought me in. So my first job was to get a value on the Banksy and uh, see about restoring it. Obviously, you would not be doing what I'm doing unless you're a perfectionist. A fellow heritage architect once made a very interesting point that what they do is the opposite of what architects do, which is to give you something that you normally wouldn't have without them. And in the heritage preservation business, oftentimes when we're finished with what we do, the majority of people just think that we were never there. Originally, the artist did this installation rather quickly. However, we have the luxury of spending much more time and guiding our choices on what is there today. And what is there today is very different than what was there when the artist installed it. You can see that a lot of the paint has, has faded. The, the spot jockeying was done by a, a, another artist who is less known, who uh, then went and elaborated, if you will, on the original by adding their own tag and uh, spray painted additional graffiti on top of, of the original. So that's where the problem lies in separating and making sure that uh, the second one is removed without damage to the original. One can argue um, for that extra graffiti or against it. Um, our responsibility was to remove it and remove it safely. And I feel that we've completed that successfully. The most important aspect of it is that if I feel that we have respected the original, then we, we would be very, very happy. Uh, and we still have to move the blocks and, and put it all together, which of course is concerning to us professionally. However, we, we trust the other professionals we have brought on the team uh, to complete everything as outlined. The original mural was cut into three limestone slabs. Making them stand as one piece is going to be tricky because the middle stone is only eight inches wide. If we were to prepare the stones, drill the necessary holes for the pins, and stack the stones on top of each other, we would still not be confident that they're going to stand up on their own. 
Therefore, the engineer has designed a big metal armature that goes around the two sides of the stone at the back. The armature will come with pre-drilled holes and we will be drilling through those holes into the stone and then we'll be putting uh, stainless steel pins in and holding them in with epoxy to lock the stones to the steel armature, which is bolted to the floor and that should be sufficient to hold the stones from tip toppling over. There's only specific locations that have enough room to really display the piece in the way it should be displayed. We've engaged Johnson Chu to create a piece around it uh, that complements it and I think it's actually a really, really intelligent piece he's done around it. And I think it'll be uh, quite a draw and will enhance the path enormously. Our role is to come up with uh, art, uh, an art piece that uh, engages with the, uh, the Banksy piece, which is the uh, original art piece that uh, our work has to relate to. It was a quite a complex project. I mean, we could have made it quite simply a piece that went up against the wall and said that this used to be, you know, part of an existing building and, and enclosed in glass. And, but we wanted one to engage it somewhat differently. And um, so, the, of course, there's the piece itself, uh, but instead of having it up against the wall, we decided to have it freestanding. And uh, so one can actually walk around the piece and observe it and engage with it as if it was in itself an artifact, uh, something that uh, was a ruin or a main that uh, in itself is enclosed in glass, but also in a context that uh, was evocative of how this artifact was actually located in context with the original building itself. The location of the Banksy within the path was uh, an interest, interesting challenge. It has to do with the notion of the unfolding of one's experience as they walk through the path. But unfortunately, it was to the back end of an escalator. So we thought that would be the perfect location to put this surrogate uh, in which one would view it first before seeing the Banksy. And, um, and again, it would be perceived as a kind of apparition and it would entice people to wonder what it was that they're actually seeing. You know, the path is all about mo movement and view, and a very concentrated one at that. Some street art shouldn't be preserved. I think people have that opinion that, you know what, if it's on the street, it shouldn't be taken, you know, cut out of a wall and resold. And I think we didn't have any intention of doing that. We liked the piece. We wanted to keep it. We knew it was a Banksy. It was in his book. He published it on his website. So we knew it was a Banksy. It wasn't a fraud. Um, you know, whoever Banksy may be, but we, we liked it and we weren't planning on selling it and we really wanted to give it back to the public. So putting it in our project was part of that puzzle and the perfect location for it was in a public atmosphere, which is what we're sitting in today, which is the PATH Network in Toronto.